got any questions, uh, hit the chat. Um, these webinars are super interactive. You can participate as much as you want and we'll try and answer your questions. Obviously, when we're talking about new features like this, there is a lot of questions. What can it do? How does that apply to me, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so definitely hit the chat and we'll try and respond to those throughout. <clears throat> we're coming up on the hour here. Um, as I said, it's um, we've got a, a great session for you today. Today's session is really about introducing these new features and talking about how they apply uh, to all of you. And uh, they are super new. They're, one of them is, is scheduled for launch next week and the other is coming very shortly after. So um, as we get closer to customer use cases, we can really talk about you know, how to specifically flex these features into your programs. Um, We've got Chris O'Brien joining us from our solutions team. Chris is going to be on the chat today with us. Um, we'll give it one more minute and then we'll hop into it. We'll in intro and um, yeah, get into today's session. I think we need some introductory music for these webinars, Alyssa. I was <laughs> just thinking that. We'll, uh, we need we'll... a little jingle. Yeah, we'll have to give some feedback on that for the next one. Little jingle. It could be something motivational. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think it's uh, it's time to get into it. So, hello, everybody. Welcome to today a session. Um, you've got myself, Luke Rowan. Uh, I am a solutions consultant with the EdApp team based in Melbourne. And we've also got Alyssa Ryan. Uh, Alyssa, hey, tell everyone. us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so based in Sydney, I'm the senior product manager um, for the authoring experience. And um, I've been at EdApp for seven months now. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And and you said the, the authoring team. Can you, obviously, we want to get into the features today, but um, I think it's worth noting that Alyssa has come onto this webinar and we're pretty lucky to have her because these features that we're talking about today belong to her team. They have been developed by her team and um, we have quite a few streams at EdApp that look after different parts of the platform. So if some of you know the platform super well, you would know that you can use it to author content. You can deploy to your learners. You can onboard them. You can track analytics and all of those different things. So uh, Alyssa specifically looks after onboarding and authoring. Um, so these features that we're going to talk about today uh, fit under those branches. And um, I, I think today is, is kind of special. Obviously, most of these webinars are led by our sales and customer success team. But... We've got the, the brain power here today to, to back up why we develop these features and, and um, yeah, from the, in terms of learning outcomes, how powerful they, they can be. Um, let's get into today's agenda. So we've got two features to uncover today. Firstly, practical assessments. Uh, and then second, group training. So the way that we're going to structure the webinar <clears throat> is to talk about firstly why did we develop these features and how we imagine them applying to different industries. And then we're going to get into the live demo and show you how to set them up. Um, is, I guess it's worth uh, saying here, uh, giving people a clear picture as to when they can access these features. Um, Alyssa, uh, we just mentioned it a second ago, but for those that have just joined us, um, when can people expect to get hands-on with these new features? Uh, so practical assessments, we've started the rollout of that. So over the next kind of few days to a week, um, people will be able to start using that. And group training is coming shortly afterwards. So mid next month um, is the expectation for that one. Okay. If you're interested, uh, particularly in group training, as far as um, being part of the initial test group, um, definitely reach out to us and let us know. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. So next week for practical assessments, group training midway through July. But um, 
if you wanted to play around with the beta version of group training and, and um, give us some feedback and test it out, uh, send us an email and we can set that up for you uh, in your accounts. Um, again, a call out, hit the chat if there's any questions. Uh, if I'm, as I'm rattling along here, Alyssa, if there's any questions in the chat that, that I can speak to right away, we'll address. Uh, otherwise, we'll <clears throat> be handling a, a bit of a Q&A session at the end of the, the, uh, the time slot here. Okay, so let's get into why. We've got these two features that are going to add a fantastic value to everybody's programs. But why, did, why have we pursued them? Um, a great stat here, 85% of workplaces deploy face-to-face -face training. That's great. Of course, that, that is accurate or, or potentially more than that. Um, but we still see a large prevalence of using spreadsheets to track outcomes, to track who was there for a group training session or potentially to perform a skills analysis in a spreadsheet sheet uh, and if you are if you guys fall into this boat then obviously you would understand the pain points of of managing uh, data in that way um, spreadsheets I would say though that there is a portion of of uh, customers out there and and companies out there that use paper-based printed paper-based format and our friends at iAuditor often tell us iAuditor is a sister platform of EdApp under the Safety Culture Group. And they often tell us some interesting stories about their customers who are printing out forms and filling them in and stuffing them in boxes and putting them in storage units. And the data is there, but you would be lucky to find it if you tried. Um, so practical assessments, um, really just a way to verify and track those skill sets and perform skills analysis in the workplace, group training, tracking training in person. From a, I guess from a rationale standpoint, Alyssa, in terms of why we've looked at these two features, is there anything to add there before we get into the, the nuts and bolts of, of each of them? I think that's a really good summary. I mean, essentially practical assessments with EdApp, we have the ability to assess knowledge um, and practical assessments is really the next piece of that, which is um, verifying the application of that knowledge. Um, and so it's really just a way, as you mentioned, Luke, to be able to go through and verify that learners are able to perform those certain tasks. And I think for group training, you really kind of hit it on the head. It's We know that there's workforces that um, have large parts of their team's training in a face-to-face -face environment. And um, often there's a compliance piece to that as well. And it can be recorded on paper or in Excel. And really for us, th this is an opportunity to build out a new mode of presenting content in this kind of one-to-many environment and also be able to track all the attendees for the customers so they know who was there, who did the training, what the training was on, and have that all captured in one place. So really replacing that admin overhead around some of the current processes that exist today. Wonderful. Brilliant. And, and what does that mean in terms of uh, combining these new functionalities with the existing feature sets of ADAPT? Here we've got a, a few kind of graphics and to kind of map out the fact that ADAPT has the theory component down. We are a mobile-first micro-learning platform where you can put together super engaging um, micro-learning, whether that be combining video with animated GIFs, audio narration, quizzing questions, games, surveys, et cetera, et cetera. So that is really the core of the EdApp platform that's been around for quite a while. What we see as being really powerful is combining these in-person tactics with that. So we've got our classroom or our group training, practical assessments. Uh, and then at the very end there, we throw, thought we'd throw in a mention to Brain Boost as well, which, our, is, which is our feature for space repetition. So in talking to partners, I've really found that there's a lot of excitement to use Brain Boost in conjunction with these other features. So the idea that you deliver, deliver your theory, maybe it's, a, it's an induction, you perform a practical assessment to verify that someone has understood, but then as the learner continues with their 
um, journey with your with your business, you want to constantly reinforce and make sure that they remember or they understand those key topics moving forward. And Brain Boost is a feature that automatically does that via an algorithm called SM2. Uh, I often reference Duolingo when we talk about Brain Boost. Duolingo, which most people know, is is a platform for language learning. We use the same algorithm. We just use it in a different way in NetApp. So there's some pretty exciting science behind the way that these features work. Okay, let's get into practical assessments and talk about what it is, how does it apply to you, and, and then to demo it as well. Let me just look at the time here. We've, uh, <laughs> that's, we've got to get going. There's a lot to demo today. So practical assessments here is a way to deliver in-person assessments, as we've said. The visuals that you see on screen, which we'll demo live in a second, kind of depict this scenario where I, as a supervisor or a, or a trainer, might go into my team and say, okay, it's time for you to demonstrate your knowledge on a certain topic. The learner on the left displays their QR code to say they're ready for the assessment. On the right, the trainer scans that and then is able to activate a checklist against a certain criteria that you can figure custom for that task. So it's, it's really quite straightforward. The next step of that is obviously tracking. So we've got our learner experience, we've got our trainer experience, and then in the background, marrying up the analytics from in-person assessments with the theory that I was just talking about before. So we've really got a an end-to-end -end solution here. Talking about different applications for this, I'm sure if we if we have a bit of a look at the attendees, we've got people from manufacturing, construction, finance, cafes, restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. We have all types of customers that like to use EdApp. Um, and this feature really applies to everyone, we believe. So if you're in manufacturing, I'm sure you're already thinking about the possibilities, but a few things here, standard operating procedures like goods, goods assembly potentially. So verifying in person that someone knows how to do a procedure from A to Z. Uh, verifying safety procedures and safety inductions, understanding whether individuals know the safety protocols of your business. In retail, it could be setting up a merchandising display, how to effectively put a hat on the, uh, the new collection on the mannequin in store, or maybe it's customer service related. Maybe there is a specific checklist that a, a new hire uh, that you would assess against for a new hire on how they might talk to a customer, how they greet them. Do they use the, the company lingo? Um, do they speak with confidence, for example? And we've got a few kind of examples in our live demo to talk about that hospitality uh, and you know more white collar office spaces as well uh, obviously there are you know clear applications for um, testing and using this feature yeah. I think that's enough preamble there on terms of of rationale Alyssa um, let's get into the live demo here and and talk through how it all works um, so you can see my browser screen. Can you not, Alyssa? You can see the, the EdApp admin console. Yes. Awesome. So guys, we've got a, a few example courses in here. These courses have come from our library with exception to this Ford F-150 example. So all of these courses that we'll look at are available from the EdApp library. They're modifiable. You can customize them. You can brand them, et cetera, et cetera. We've tried to pick out a few examples that might resemble the sorts of applications that you guys in the audience um, may be interested in. The first one to speak to, I think, is a safety in the workplace example. Obviously, Safety 101 uh, is something that most organizations will need to deliver to their audiences, whether you're in a manual labor setting or not. There's always basic safety requirements. This particular course here, if we just cycle through it, it's really just an introduction to wearing PPE, slips, trips, and falls, 
um we've got video content this is the theory that i was talking about a second ago we've got our assessments uh we've got safe lifting etc cetera, etc cetera. so really just a very basic introduction to safety of course if you want more extended courseware our library does offer that but we're not here today to talk about that but definitely have a bit of a peruse um if we go in and edit this course um we can have a look at practical assessments so the structure of this course, and again, to be clear, we're looking at the admin console where we would wire together this training. We've got our theory here and we've got our practical assessment. What we've done today is just to say, OK, for this course, we want the individual to demonstrate safe lifting. That is the practical for this uh, safety 101 course. Uh, this could potentially be an induction, a part of an induction, for example. If I click into our uh, safe lifting practical, which we've already set up, I can then edit. And there's a whole range of settings and configurations that we could look at uh, with this module. But let's have a look at this um, configuration to commence with. So what we've got here is the checklist that would need to be covered as part of demonstrating safe lifting. We've got obviously some pre-assessment checks, check that the item being lifted is safe for one person lift, where is the person wearing proper PPE? And then we've got some procedural checks. So actually viewing the person doing something live and assessing them and uploading evidence here. I know that everyone will hit the chat right now and say, okay, you've got photo evidence there. Can I upload video? That's why Alyssa's here to make sure I don't make any promises that we can't keep. Mm -hmm. uh, when will we see video in practical assessments, Alyssa? Yeah, so we're starting to work on that shortly. So um, I would say in the, in the coming weeks, um, that's something that we'll be rolling out as well. So that will, um, that will be, I guess, something that comes in later in um, July. And once we have that, um, and again, all of these features are just looking for customer feedback, things that, that you'd like to have added. And this was one that, that came through really strongly um, when we were speaking to customers previously. So it's a really good example of um, our ability to be able to add those into the product when, uh, when we hear how necessary they are. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, definitely. The, the more push that we get from customers for a certain feature, it does tend to, you know, come up with our product team. So uh, if you want to give us your two cents, feel free to shoot us a note for sure. We would love to hear. But let's get back to this form here. So we've got different types of uh, elements in this form. We've got check boxes, we've got radio buttons, we've got image upload, etc. And all of those things are powered by these selections on the left-hand side. So to be clear, right now, we're building the practical assessment. We've got, for procedure one, pretty straightforward, did the team member bend their knees? Uh, if we wanted to add a new, um, I guess, component to this assessment, what you do is just drag and drop your question from the left-hand side. Uh, we would add our... Uh, statement here. So let's just replicate this. Did the person uh, keep their back straight? Great. So this label here, when you start to build your own assessments, is where you enter in the title on the left. If you want to add a little tip here, you can add a guide. And this could be, you know, for the uh, trainer, just something to prompt them on the selection to make sure that they're, they're completing a form in the right way. You can play around with the layout. You can switch up, you know, vertical, horizontal style radio buttons. The next thing to understand is the values. So in this case, it is just a yes or no outcome. Then maybe there's an NA for certain sorts of questions. The validation here, this is just whether you want the, the assessor to complete this as a mandatory part of the assessment. Uh, and then the alignment here, this is just some, some styling that we can apply. So let's add that one. And you can see that has been added there. 
if we wanted to add in the ability to upload evidence, just as we've done with these other examples, just drag it in, add your evidence. So it's super easy. Bring in the, the attribute, give it a title, fill in the values, whether that be all of these different ones. And in the following examples, we'll show a few of these different types of, of uh, criteria here. I'm just going to delete that one. I'll delete that one. We'll save the form. Now let's look at it from the learner and the assessor perspective. We've been looking at obviously the, the builder, the authoring experience. So on the left here, I have my EdApp learner experience. Uh, on the right, I have what the assessor would see. So for the learner, as we touched on just a second ago, when it's time for a practical assessment, the learner navigates to their practical assessment here. We've got their theory. They've completed that. If they click here, we can see, okay, this individual has already passed here on the left-hand side. Um, it's not good for demoing purposes that it's actually completed already. So let me just log out very quickly and I'll, I'll bring up an account that um, where we can go from step one. So just give me one second here. Okie dokie. Okay. One moment. Alyssa, feel free to feel while I'm faffing around in the background. <laughs> um, no, we're, all, we're almost there. You're One almost second. There. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're very good. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So if I share my screen again, we've got the learner experience here. I've just logged in as a different learner just so that none of the modules are completed here on the left. If I go down to my safe lifting practical for this learner, we can see that they haven't passed. They're ready to go. They're, they're starting from scratch here. If I go over here to this window, this window that you're seeing here is what the assessor sees when they scan the QR code. So it is a process of, okay, learner, let me scan your code and it will take them here and then they can jump into the assessment. It will take them directly to the learner's profile so that they can jump in there and, and, and just click and get started. Um, and here we can see that assessment that we were building before on the left-hand side. So here we imagine a scenario where um, the individual is then said, okay, well, go and grab that box and pick it up and, and we'll run through the process. So the pre-assessment checks, okay, we can check this off, great. Uh, have they worn proper PPE? Wonderful. Okay, perform the lift, great. Yes, you bent your knees. Okay, I'll upload a file uh, to show that you've done that correctly. Uh, and I should have an image uh, just here on my desktop. Okay, the back straight. Oh, that was bending the knees. Okay, bent knees, great. We'll drop that one in. Wonderful. Okay, did they keep their back straight? Perfect. Let's upload that graphic. And then when we get to the end of the form, this is a rather for short checklist, obviously. If you're looking at assessing if someone can drive a forklift or a heavy vehicle or uh, do something more involved, your uh, practical assessment will be quite comprehensive. If we submit here, the final question for the facilitator or the trainer is to say, okay, was there any feedback? Great job overall, potentially. And did they pass or fail? So if they pass, the learner is then shown that they have passed that assessment and they're good until next time. If they fail, then there is the opportunity to re-attempt it. Uh, so the learner has the module, it remains uh, as a task to do for the facilitator then to come back and, and go about this assessment one more time. Just for the purposes of today, we'll give that a quick pass. We'll save that uh, and then we're away. We've got, it's just timed out there because I jumped out of a, a different user profile 
to get into the right learner profile. The, 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 the problems of doing live demos with uh, test accounts, but there we have a, a, a kind of finished outcome and we're ready to go. Let's talk about a few other examples of practical assessments here. Uh, I'm just gonna bring up the learner experience. For those of you that are in hospitality, maybe this cafe example is more appropriate. This could be making an espresso based drinks. It could be making a, a cocktail. It could be about food production in a kitchen, for example. In this course here, again, this is our library course on uh, coffee making skills. We've got beautiful theory that we can look at on the left here. It's interactive, it's fun, it's gamified, it's, it's video based. We've got assessments. I love this template here. It's, it's really about using numeric values to answer a specific question. Obviously, I, I do a lot of coffee drinking and not a lot of coffee making, so I got that one wrong. Um, but let's uh, jump out of that theory and have a look at the practical assessment for making a cappuccino. So we've got our uh, learner experience on the left here. We have um, the QR code as we saw a second ago. If I navigate over to the uh, assessor experience and I look at this practical assessment, I can then go in and trigger the assessment for anyone here. So let's start this practical for Jill Jackson. We'll load this one up. Oh, let me just go back. I apologize. Cappuccino assessment is one that we built out for this demo. Here we are. <clears throat> so different application different form so we start off this form with a drop down so which cafe which cafe is the individual located in okay great um what is the experience level uh, and then we've got our radio buttons here so like the previous form uh, and then we've got this is called a survey type um uh, assessment so if I go back here to courses and I navigate over to our espresso course, roll down here, I can look at the two practical assessments. The latte one isn't built out, so it wasn't showing us anything just a second ago. If I go into the editing format, we can have a look at where this was built. So the survey, Alista, can you tell us a little bit about what we've set up here? And I guess, why would you use a survey attribute or component to build this assessment yeah absolutely so surveys are really useful one when you have like a theme around questions um and you have multiple criteria that you want to do assessment against so um in this example with the cappuccino the performance is really around temperature um overall cleanliness of the process and also the speed in which um in which it took place so We've got a bit of a theme there around um, their capability of actually performing um, the cappuccino making. And then we just rank them on each of those particular sub questions within that theme. So survey is really useful for that. Um, you know, radio buttons, we've seen a few of those as well. They're great for like an either or yes or no. Um, they can also be used um, for a rating scale as well, which I think we'll see in one of the other examples. And then at the bottom here, we've got an example of a free text input. Um, so where a radio button doesn't fit the requirements, obviously you can just have the assessor comment directly on the performance here. Okay, brilliant. So let's have a look at our final demo example here in the learner app. Uh, and then we'll kind of summarize all of the different sorts of components for building practical assessments. Um, I can see there's a few uh, notes in the chat there. Are there any questions there, Alyssa, that would be great to speak to here? Um, yes, so just looking, there's a comment uh, from Belinda around rankings and can we be more specific about what one to five means? Um, I think in, in that scenario with using um, radio buttons for rankings or surveys for um, one, two, three, four, five to capture a um, response. Where we've got one, two, three, four, five, that's really, that's a description that can be set and a label that can be set um, 
by the author. So it could be something from, um, you know, competent, not yet competent. It could be, um, you know, satisfactory, neutral, not satisfactory, highly satisfactory. So it really allows kind of a breadth of, um, of labeling within there to really capture um, a response that's appropriate for the question that you've got. So we just chose a value of one, two, three, four, five, but that could be anything that, that you wish to have in there that um, makes most sense for the kind of uh, questions that, um, that are being asked of the assessment. So Luke's okay. just filling out a couple of different options there. And now we can see that those responses have changed. So from an authoring perspective, it's completely up to you um, on how you want to label them and, and categorize those values. Awesome. Hopefully that, that answered that question. Anything else to, to speak to in these questions here? Thank you for that, by the way. Great, great question. Yeah, I mean, if we can run through um, a couple of those other options um, in the next example and just some use cases on when survey or select or radio might be more helpful. Um, we can Wonderful. That. Hello. Um, there are some questions in the uh, Q&A as well. So uh, we've got one anonymous attendee asking, can you take the photo through the assessment on your phone the same as yes. I order to? You can. So, um, so the example we've shown is from desktop. So if you're on a device with the camera enabled, when you click um, within that section, it'll bring up a menu and you can choose to browse within your device. You can also choose to activate the camera and take a photo directly. And then that'll be uploaded into that component. Awesome. And then there's one more question from Adam. He's just asking, can you, uh, can the assessor trigger the practical assessment without needing the student to show the QR code as it would be much easier for them to do so. Yes, they definitely can. So the QR code is really about when that scan that takes the assessor directly into the, the, assess the particular assessment for that particular learner. Um, the other way to navigate to it is there's a facilitate tab within, um, within the, oh, thank you Luke, within the admin portal and you select practical assessment from there. And what you'll be what you'll be seeing there is a list of all the practical assessments that you can perform, select the most appropriate one. There's a previewer there if you're not sure as well, just to double check, and then you can click on the learner. So two different methods to, to get you um, up and running as an assessor. Brilliant. Right, and then the last question, sorry. Um, <laughs> when uh, when keeping records of the assessment, is there an option to allow for reassessment within a specified time, such as two years? So the assessments um, at the moment, they're, um, they're conducted as one-off. So we record, um, the assessment is taking place, we mark it as complete. Um, and it doesn't have a recurrence as yet. It is something that we have heard from a couple of customers um, and we would really like to be able to do something like that. There is some capability um, that we need to build out. So definitely if that is something that, um, that you're looking for in your business, definitely let us know. Um, and it is something that, that we're gonna continue to monitor and look at what we can do to have a facility where you can essentially run the same assessment periodically. Okay, brilliant. Um, in the immediate term, it really just would be a matter of uh, creating that assessment and deploying it at a later date, would it not, Alyssa? Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Okay, wonderful. Well, thanks for the cameo there, Joyce. You certainly surprised me, but we've got uh, our customer success team on the line uh, there to answer your questions as well. Hopefully we covered off some key questions there. They were, they were really, uh, I guess, appropriate questions that, that most people would think about. So thank you for those. Um, let's have a look at this final example, which is around using practical assessments for product training. We've got a beautiful EDAP lesson here. Um, we have many customers that use EDAP for product training, whether you're you know, selling TVs or vehicles or uh, shoes. Um, and EDAP does that super well with its kind of very graphical focused approach and, and mobile first approach to training. 
there is obviously a, a great uh, opportunity here to bring in practical assessments uh, to understand whether potentially someone at Ford in this mock use case knows their stuff when they're selling the F-150. So the practical assessment that we can look at here, if we just go back here on the left-hand side, um, and we can look at, let me just reset, refresh this one. We've got our F-150 practical. Okay, I wanna jump in and, and assess Paul here. Let's start the practical assessment. And again, we've got different types of elements to construct this assessment. The, the way that we've configured this mock example is to break it into two sections, communication skills, obviously key in, scale, in sales. Uh, and then we've got uh, the radio buttons, we've got the free text. And then down here, we have a, a slightly different component that we haven't seen just before. This is called uh, selectable checkboxes, is it not, uh, Alyssa? Yeah, that's right. So we've got checkboxes and then we've also got select boxes, which is the ones that we're seeing in this example. And they're really useful um, if you, if you want to have the ability to select more than one option against the question. So, for example, you know, select all of these that apply in the particular um, assessment. So checkbox is great for this. Yes, they're wearing the right PPE gear, for example. Um, select boxes are when, like in this example, we can identify each of the features that they mentioned, and there might be three or four different options, and multiple selections can be made, just ticking off the ones that were mentioned. Brilliant, brilliant. So in our example here on the left-hand side, we've just simply mocked up the fact that maybe uh, the assessor wants to know that the individual has spoken about these key features here. Do they understand the engine types? Um, and then down here, we've got an example of using the radio buttons to assess you know, performance. Uh, again, with all of these um, practical assessments, the final step is the pass fail. Uh, I have heard from customers wanting to, if they were to give uh, a, an overall rating of someone's performance um, uh, in the assessment. So there, if you wanted to do that, you would just do it at the bottom uh, of the form here, as we can see with this example. Okay, wonderful. Any final questions, Alyssa, on practical assessments before we jump over to part two of today's session? I think the ones that have come up in the chat um, appear to have been answered as well by the moderator. Okay, wonderful. We can certainly speak to those in, in more detail at the end of the session as well. Okay, wonderful. Well, let's circle back now to a bit of uh, an understanding of, of uh, group training, and then we'll get into the, the live demo again. Okay, so what is group training and why? As we said at the top of the call here, Group training is fundamentally two things. Firstly, it is a way to track in-person training, classroom training inside of the EdApp tool uh, and store that alongside uh, the other training efforts like the micro learning, et cetera, et cetera. The second thing, it is, it is a very new and dynamic way to present. Of course, when you bring people into a, into a classroom, it might just be a speaker talking about a topic. Often they have a PowerPoint behind them as well where they can present video, et cetera, et cetera. What group training allows you to do is take what you've built with the micro learning and use it in a presentation format. And if you've seen some of the content that we were looking at before, it's a very exciting way to present. Um, Use cases when we come to group training, obviously safety briefings, weekly toolbox talks, annual refreshers, if you're doing a fire drill or fire safety, for example, uh, obviously those things apply to, you know, manual labor settings as well as uh, office settings. When we talk about retail, maybe it's weekly team meetings, uh, updates about COVID policies, Maybe it's a, a weekly team meeting about new trends coming into your store or, or a new menu in a cafe that you want to bring people up to speed on and speak to them um, face to face about, about these core things to understand to do their jobs well. So really quite a straightforward feature. Let's get into the demo here. We've got two examples 
that we can talk you through here. So I'll navigate over here to the learner experience. I'll bring up our admin console. So the two, two mock examples that we're gonna talk about today are firstly, a weekly toolbox talk. Uh, and we hear this from customers all the time. There is a, basically for, for most kind of companies that are in construction or manufacturing or some sort of um, working production environment, safety briefings are daily or weekly. Um, they are very, very common. And typically people are being brought into a room or just gathered together at the start of a shift to talk about the key things of the day. Maybe that is an ongoing delivery of, of skills updates. Maybe it is a chance to, to talk about something that's happened in the workplace that you know people need to be mindful of. Maybe it's an incident has occurred. You bring people together. You want to ensure that they understand face to face and for compliance purposes you want to track the fact that everybody was there and, and you acknowledge that they participated so we have this example course here it's our weekly toolbox talk uh, if we edit this module and go up here to settings so just to give you a, a little bit of background as to how to configure it you would just go to the settings and then enable group training so what this does is then qualifies this course that you have in your library for a delivery in a group training format. The next step would be to go up to the facilitate tab in the admin and go to group training. A common question here is, okay, if I have trainers out there in the workplace, can I just give them access to this feature and not access to building content? So or managing users, et cetera, et cetera? And the answer is yes, there is a specific role that just can access practical assessments, group training, et cetera. It's called a facilitator role. So we've got you covered there. If we click on group training here, we have those two courses. We enabled both of those courses for group training. And here we have two options. We can preview and just have a look at the contents of this module. We're not in the live session yet. And this is where potentially you're viewing the content to make sure that when you go in to the session, uh, you've got all your ducks in a row and you can present really succinctly to your audience. Uh, over here, this button is to start the session. So imagining that we've just uh, gathered everybody together, we wanna start the session and we've got the two things that we mentioned before. Firstly, the ability to present and then secondly, the ability, uh, second, sorry, the ability to add your attendees. So this view here, obviously we're looking at it on my desktop. This could be on a laptop. It could be a computer connected to a screen. Uh, it could be on a tablet on like a sign-in sheet, for example. The interactions on this page um, are, are very simple to use. So firstly, if the way in which you conduct your in-person trainings is to for the facilitator to call a role to determine who was there, they can do so. They would just simply have this on screen and go through and nominate who was there. They can obviously search for individuals. If you have a, a very large audience, they can search by name, email, or username. The username could be their employee ID, for example, that's up to you. So this is the scenario where the, the person running the session is adding attendance. In addition to that, we have this QR code on the left-hand side. So if your audience has EdApp on their phones, they can very easily say, okay, well, I'll check myself into this session. And they do so by scanning the code, accepting that they were there, and then they will appear here live for the session. So it doesn't, obviously, when you've got a very large audience participating, maybe it's it's more practical for have to have individuals log themselves or, or, or connect themselves with the session. Um, if it is really just, a, if you are just using this feature to capture attendance and that is all you're doing, once you've captured all of your attendees and the session has ended, you could end the session up in the top right uh, and that will basically store everyone was there, who was there. 
Uh, Alyssa, anything else to add on this page before I go on to the presentation mode? Uh, no, I think you captured it well. Okay, wonderful. Uh, and any questions that I can call out at this point? Um, so just having a look at the moment, uh, one of the questions is, can you group attendees by site? So essentially, um, the attendee list is really anyone that's been assigned to that course. So they can be selected um, from there. And it's really, if you have a particular course, you could assign that for a particular site as well. And then you would have that subset of, of users available there. Um, the next question is, does the system record the difference to someone who was added to a session, i.e. the attendee signed in or the session leader signed them on? Um, no, we just capture the attendance. Um, to Luke's point about a learner scanning themselves in, the facilitator will be able to see that list as well so they'll be able to cross-reference everyone that appears on that with people they've added themselves and also learners that have signed themselves in as well. Uh, I think that was it. Brilliant, brilliant. The, the management of, of individuals accessing the content and appearing in this list as Alyssa said, is managed under our user groups function. So that is the area where you segment your audience into different groups. It might be by site or by role, for example. And then that in turn determines whether they would appear here for this session. Very easy to set it up. Okay, the second big part of this feature is presentation mode. Um, so we're encouraging everybody here to look at EdApp as a way of presenting to your audience. And we think that there are very exciting applications to do that. Obviously, a, a typical PowerPoint is a combination of rich media. But with EdApp, you can obviously do it in a bit more interactive format. So the start of this module is an introduction to the topic which we're clicking through as a facilitator. We've got, these are all different EdApp templates uh, that present information which you as a, as a presenter could speak to. Clicking through, zeroing in on different components of uh, the content here to tell a story and you can speak to each of those. So a little bit more exciting than a bullet pointed um, PowerPoint slide, for example. You've got your different reveal templates. So these are all of the templates under the hood for creating content in EdApp that you would see in micro learning. But here, obviously, we're presenting to an audience. Stopping down here. So what is really key to the way that we create content is our assessment and game templates. So for an individual that's taking this on their phone, they would answer this multiple choice question. We would store whether they got it right or wrong. Uh, we would track how long they spent, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you record that in the analytics. Um, what The way that we see it being used in a presentation format is here, the, the presenter could say to the crowd, hey, everybody, okay, we've got a question here. Let's reflect on what we have just learned. Let's answer it together. Is it A, B, or C, or a combination of those? And then you answer together. You get the pop-up that reaffirms what the correct answer is. And then you have a, a great way to stop down. I hear all the time from, from partners who are looking to use EdApp as a way for their audience to interact live during the session. So if you wanted to actually have individuals on their phones answering these questions, either during the session or during breaks, you could absolutely do that. The way that you would do that is just to create quizzes uh, in EdApp's other features and allow them to be able to take those questions and, and log their performance separately. Uh, so you can absolutely do that. Uh, but what we're talking about here is, is really just presentation mode. Um, what we haven't seen in this in this module so far is a video, obviously very important when presenting, uh, and we can obviously add that into the content as well. Um, any questions there, Alyssa? I, I can see we've gone over time, but we always go over time, and we've got one more example if everyone can hang on, if you've got another 10 minutes. Uh, no questions at this stage. A um, couple of different ideas about potentially putting practical assessments into the course library. Um, 
And yeah, just reaffirmment around presentation mode being a great way to reinforce learning. We've got Joyce back in. She's calling in from the chopper. How are you? Joyce? I actually have a question. Um, <laughs> a lot of my clients have kind of asked what's the difference between, I guess, I auditor and EDAP when it comes to practical assessments. And I think it's worth kind of mentioning that here. What's the difference between the two? I guess the, the main one for us is that practical assessments is connected into the course and the lessons. And um, as Luke's spoken about um, earlier on the call around delivering the theory components and then having a practical assessment component um, assigned to that course and that being part of um, the completion um, journey for that for that user. So they go through the theory components, they do their practical assessment, they get that marked, and once they pass that, then they have a complete, uh, they have a completion for that course, and then that goes into, into their learning record. Wonderful. Joyce, feel free to jump in again if there's any other questions. Thank you for that one. Let's look at this other example here. We've got our annual fire safety refresher. Obviously, we're talking about weekly toolbox talks a second ago. Maybe it's something that is done uh, at a kind of longer scheduled um, configuration here. Safety refreshers for fire is something that we all do, um, even in my home office here. Um, and the feature works exactly the same way. If we could just to recap here just a second ago uh, from what we're looking at just, just previously, sorry. We've got our presentation mode. We've started the session. Uh, we can go into presentation mode if we like and start to present. But before we do that, it, um, it makes sense to give people a chance to log in. Uh, I think uh, obviously a good point to call out here is that, you know, we've been talking about in person a lot, but in person obviously means, you know, where we're face to face, but it also might mean a virtual session. So if you're hosting these, these uh, trainings via web conference, of course, you can share your screen just as I'm doing and have people log into the session via the QR code or registering them here in the center of the screen. Um, so definitely lends itself uh, to both scenarios. Uh, we can go through the presenter mode again to have a look at the different sorts of interactions. Of course, if you want to view that on different devices uh, on screen here, you can, as, as always, EdApp is fully responsive. Um, yeah, any questions in the chat about this example or any great ideas for how you might use this feature that we can share with the audience? So just going through there, there was a question around capacity. So is there a limit on how many slides we can use? Um, no, there's no limit. Um, oh, Joyce has responded saying short and sweet is our recommendation. That's spot on. Um, and then we also have a question around someone that has multiple sites with staff. Um, and can we pick from a filter view um, would be helpful. So I guess the um, question there is, is it the same course that's being delivered across multiple sites? And if so, you can assign by different user groups as well. And um, you could also create, um, you know, a version of this course for multiple multiple locations. Um, one of the other questions that we have in here is, we have touch screens in our classrooms so the trainers can get maximum interaction and user experience uh, from this feature. So, sorry, more a comment than a question, but that's really great to hear. Yeah, definitely can be delivered on any of those devices. Wonderful. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great, great use case there. I was just bringing up our user groups feature here just to show very quickly how we can break up audiences or, or break up your users in your account into different user groups, uh, different sites. For example, uh, a user group is very simple to put together, simple name, adding the individuals to that group. Uh, assigning managers to that group uh, if you need that function and then assigning the courses as well. So if, for example, we have a specific subset of our audience that are taking this toolbox talk, then we would select that module for these individuals. And therefore, when we're in the other view where we're logging attendance, uh, only these individuals can participate there. 
Wonderful. Okay, so we've covered off our two examples here. We've covered both features from a demo perspective. Thank you so much for the question, everybody. Um, obviously, uh, we can wrap up with any questions if there's any further thoughts or we want to kind of get into the weeds with any other features in NetApp if, if people are interested. Uh, alternatively, uh, of course, um, we are always available to take you through this, this material at greater length and more than that, actually show you your real life examples uh, in the EdApp uh, format. The One of the best things that I, I think that we offer as part of our product is a, a freemium model, meaning that you can trial a lot of the features of the platform, well, all of the features of the platform for free for a limited time and you can use uh, a lot of the great features of the platform for free um, uh, ongoing, if you wish. Um, so definitely get in touch. We can build out your examples. We can show you really what the system can do with, with your, uh, your use cases in mind. Uh, any final questions or thoughts there, Alyssa, that, I can, that we can chat about? Uh, no final questions coming through. I don't know if uh, Joyce had any others that came through to her. That we've covered everything on the chat. Yes, I think so. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Great. Okay. Well, thank you, Alyssa. Thank you for joining me today. Um, uh, yeah, feel free to get in touch, guys. I'm just going to put my email in the chat here. Uh, for anybody that wants to reach out uh, and we can certainly take you through the platform in more detail but um, if that's all enjoy the end of the financial year I appreciate people in Australia popping in at such a busy time and if you're across Asia thank you so much for tuning in and um, we'll talk to you soon we'll catch you on the next webinar Thanks, Luke. And um, yeah, it was really great to everyone for joining and to hear that uh, feedback on the features. Uh, it's really exciting. So thanks again. Wonderful. See you guys.